It could have been us. Strategic narratives about Ukrainian refugees and the Romanian public sphere at the ECPR online seminar series in migration and ethnicity. Our presentation for this evening encapsulates part of the results of over two years dedicated um, of, it, of research dedicated into the um, challenges faced by Ukrainian refugees. Our interest in the topic of the refugee crisis stems from our previous engagement with the theme of evolving cultural practices in Romanian society and our interest in public discourses. This webinar will focus on the public debates on the modes of engagement and the courses of action proposed by political and media actors in Romania with respect to Ukrainian refugees. As researchers coming from communication sciences, we focus on discourses constituted around the public problem of migration. Why the interest in this topic? The war in Ukraine and the subsequent refugee crisis have reopened debates about the implications of migration within Europe and the kind of European society, European science uh, citizens imagine for themselves. In Romania, the issue of uh, Ukrainian refugees has been used strategically to engage with other contested themes on the public agenda, such as labor migration. This is why we insisted on labeling these uh, narratives as strategic. Our project explores various arenas of public discourse and action to understand how meaning is built with reference to the problem of refugees and what strategies are employed to mobilize the public towards politically significant action. And to provide uh, a little context for our uh, research, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has led to the largest displacement crisis in recent history with over 6 million Ukrainians forced to flee their homes. This unprecedented displacement has caused significant family separations with UNICEF reporting a 70% separation rate among displaced families. Host countries have faced numerous challenges due to the influx of refugees. These challenges include increased costs, heightened service burdens, political polarization, and various socioeconomic issues. Romania has received over 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. Initially, 74% of Romanians expressed support for the refugees. However, this support dropped with only 35% now favoring financial assistance for them. Across the European Union, support levels for humanitarian efforts remain relatively high. Still, there are growing signs of Ukraine fatigue and solidarity fatigue, indicating a decline in the willingness to continue providing support. On this slide, you can see an example of an editorial published a year after the war started in an alternative media outlet in Romania, titled Decatore Vista. The translation, how united are we still for Ukraine? The Ukrainian refugee crisis could have been a good opportunity to improve trust between citizens and state. Did we take this opportunity? This title encapsulates our research interest as well. The Ukrainian refugee crisis was connected to identity discourses related to who we are as Romanians and who Ukrainian refugees are as well. So continuing the problematizations, why did we pick up this theme? Well, the current refugee crisis has shown that Eurocentric visions of identity are not as homogeneous as projected. In fact, there are various degrees of being European. And this new wave of refugees has reopened questions about who is more deserving of aid, who is more of a symbolic threat to European unity. And another reason why, as researchers in migration studies, we find this refugee crisis to be relevant is because we can explore the implications of the crisis on discourses about migration within Europe. 
So the centrality of Ukrainian uh, war refugee in the public arena has shed new light on the economic migrant. And as a consequence, the new undertones of discourses about refugees, such as this uh, compassion, emphasis on trauma, on emotional baggage, have spilled over into discourses on the regular economic migrant. Also, the Ukrainian refugee crisis invites identitarian reconfigurations, and I'm speaking now for the public who are not part of a former socialist country. The unexpected immediacy of the refugee as a symbolic presence in these countries has triggered problematizations about historic rivalry, shared fear against the nominous aggressors, attitudes towards people of other ethnicities, and so on. Moving on, another problematization concerns the analytical tools and validity of concepts which we employ routinely to discuss about the diaspora in general. So we asked ourselves at the beginning of this research problem whether uh, we can research the war refugee with the same concepts and instruments. Do, does the way we formulate problematization still hold? And what methodological challenges are ahead of us? And in our presentation, we will try to answer all of these questions. And another implication, which is true of the broader field of mobility studies, is how we redefine terms such as labor migrant, economic refugee, transnational social field, and so on. Our analytical stance, we conduct our analysis within the broader framework of the sociology of public problems informed by symbolic interactionism and French pragmatic sociology. So in this understanding, public problems are constituted through discourse and performance on an arena, which is a place of debate, controversy, expertise, deliberation. Such a communicational constructivist perspective on public problems, we look beyond objective data to actors to public arenas to understand how actors constitute their agentivity through discursive mechanisms to propose action. Moving on. And Bianca. starting, yes, thank you. Starting from this analytical framework that was presented by my colleague Malina, we, um, we analyzed, first of all, crowdsourcing platforms for the support of Ukrainian refugees that were developed by the Romanian government and the civil society in order to gain an understanding of the symbolic battles, contested problematizations and discourses about Ukrainian refugees in the Romanian public sphere. Uh, what is um, new in our analysis is that we take these crowdsourcing platforms as dispositives that have a strategic function. They are both infrastructures of problem solving and discursive fields constituted around the public problem of refugees. As infrastructures of problem solving, they allow political significant actions such as donating and assigning resources, as discursive fields, they lead to a reconfiguration of power relations among actors. If you look at the research uh, that studies online networks of support for Ukrainian refugees, uh, they usually focus on fundraising websites uh, for uh, online financial assistance, uh, mobilization of informal groups online, or potential drivers of citizen mobilization. Uh, crowdsourcing uh, as a concept is increasingly used as a new method of public involvement into the political process, and the literature, as you can see here on the slide, distinguishes between crowdfunding and crowdsourcing, emphasizing the strategic function that these initiatives have. Migration crowdfunding is a particular form of social political crowdfunding, which is fed by a new philosophy of cooperation and solidarity. Another concept that we want to draw your attention to is the concept of humanitarian governance, because once humanitarianism becomes professionalized and institutionalized to, through government involvement, well, this leads to uh, political significant hierarchies and inequalities that arise. Uh, next, well, collaborative platforms are also engaging these positives. They facilitate the empowerment and emancipation of individuals. Such event enabling these positives innovate both in terms of deliberation, but also uh, in the transformation of political action. We draw on the definition of uh, Michel Foucault's of the dispositive as a system of relations that are established between discursive and non-discursive elements, which is constituted in a certain historical moment in order to respond to an imperative. Of course, we look into both discourse and non-discourse and how they constitute objects of knowledge. From the sociology of knowledge approach, the SCAD approach, uh, we want to address this materiality of discourses. Uh, in this sense, SCAD distinguishes between dispositives of discourse production and dispositives as infrastructures of implementation, emerging out of discourse and addressing the transformation of social orders of knowledge. 
Uh, and uh, next, uh, well, it is important also uh, to um, uh, look into a semiological approach to this positive analysis. Uh, and on the last slide, we have Cabarn's approach, which uh, structures um, the strategic position that science have in the dispositive. We look into who produces the knowledge mm -hmm. and to what end in order to understand the practices that are associated with this science. Well, the research questions that underlie our analysis, first of all, we looked into how meaning is built into the crowdsourcing platforms, and we distinguish between different types of crowdsourcing initiatives and types of actors. And second, we focus on the strategies and we analyze the strategies employed by actors in order to mobilize the public towards action. And to answer this question, we employ discourse analysis to understand how actors articulate uh, their ownership of various initiatives. Uh, in terms of um, the corpus that we used, well, uh, we analyzed 21st uh, crowdsourcing platforms that were developed by the Romanian government and by the civil society. And also we analyzed 31st uh, news articles that were published in the Romanian media uh, from um, between February and November 2022. Uh, we encounter some difficulties when we gather the corpus because we noticed the multiplication of the crowdsourcing initiatives very early in the refugee crisis and call to actions were launched by actors with various degrees of legitimacy and visibility in either mainstream or social media. As a consequence, we decided to include in our corpus only institutionalized initiatives, meaning those which were assumed by an entity, be it the government, the NGO, brands, experts, or influencers. Um, in terms of the methods that we used, well, um, we used a mixed methodology combining multimodal discourse analysis because we are looking at the crowdsourcing websites as one resource for meaning making involving text, involving images, involving videos, and also call to actions. Um, and you can see here the categories for the MMBA that we had in mind, and the second, um, we also employ discourse analysis um, in order to see how ownership uh, is done by various actors. In terms of um, the results of um, our analysis on the crowdsourcing initiatives, well, we discerned um, among six types of crowdsourcing initiatives for the Ukrainian refugees. Um, so um, the government crowdsourcing platforms, uh, the platforms initiated by experts, the NGOs crowdsourcing platforms, the social media groups, the media crowdsourcing initiatives, and also the mixed crowdsourcing initiative. Well, the most visible crowdsourcing platforms were the ones that were supervised by the government. And one example here is Dopomoha.ro, which was initiated by Code for Romania in partnership with the Department of Emergency Situations, the UN Refugee Agency, and the National Romanian Council for Refugees. Well, this categorization of crowdsourcing initiative, why is it relevant? Well. It is relevant for understanding what roles are attributed to actors in the crowdfunding campaign. The government initiatives were not the first to emerge, but they rapidly become the most visible and the most used tools. This can be partly explained in terms of resources mobilized to produce the platforms. Um, and also um, a means of raising awareness uh, was the ultimate resource for refugees to attribute agency to users. Uh, and uh, we can also see how they, um, they use call to actions uh, and um, the use of um, the donate buttons, which was really important on these platforms. Well, in terms of the types of actors, we have identified the two types of actors in the news articles about the crowdsourcing initiatives. Well, the professionals of crowdsourcing and the entrepreneurs of help. Uh, first of all, um, some actors have visibility because of their previous association with the cause or campaign. We call them professionals of crowdsourcing because they have the mechanisms in place to mobilize people, to gather resources, and most importantly, to define causes and publicize results. Uh, they also trade in information and they aim to educate the community. Second, um, uh, the entrepreneurs of help. Well, they are facilitator between donors and refugees, between citizens and authorities, and also they employ entrepreneurial skills in order to manage resources to reach their aim. Uh, as for our results of the multimodal uh, discourse analysis, well, we looked into how different modes 
of interaction are constructed on the crowdsourcing platforms. And from a multimodal perspective, the user journey is um, usually vertical, which is similar to the personal blocks. The donate buttons are very visible and usually placed in the right part of the website, incorporating the golden ratio. And the layout is designed for friendly user experience. If we look at the overall look and feel of the crowdsourcing platform supervised by the government, we can notice that, that they are very professional and the point of view is consistent throughout, which partly explains the visibility of this platform for, mm -hmm. for the intended audiences. Also, um, in terms of affordances, the platform has have a Ukrainian language version, are regularly updated and focus on specific types of help. Some use infographics as semiotic resources, which highlight the importance of humanitarian campaigns um, and is quite pronounced on the NGO's pages. And the design elements you can see on this image uh, of the slide uh, per se, they make use of the symbolism of the Ukrainian flag and sometimes they also include the uh, Romanian traditional symbols. As for um, the multimodal semiotic resources that were employed in order to construct the Ukrainian refugees, well, they are presented as victims deserving of aid, either implicitly through the use of symbols and metaphors or explicitly through the use of emotionally led images of Ukrainian mothers with children, which are selected to convey, of course, the dramatic circumstances of refugees and they encourage identification with their suffering. Uh, you can see here the second image from the Save, um, Save the Children Romanian organization, which focuses on this um, appeal to pathos. As for the mobilization strategies, we have discerned two mechanisms that were employed by the actors to establish themselves as owners of the crowdsourcing initiative. So the managing visibility and educating the public. The management of visibility is mainly done through an emphasis on the functionality of the platforms and also the re reliability of information. For instance, the Pomoha.ro presents itself as simple, efficient, and ready to use. Uh, as for the educating the public, this is another mechanism to establish uh, citizenship and ownership and to create a community of involvement and humanitarian enterprise. Uh, the educational aim here is visible in the mission statement because technology can unlock the potential of communities as critical assets and users can get information about all the other institutions and NGOs that are involved in the project through the active logos that are um, promoted on the platform. Mobilization for donation on the NGOs platform is uh, done by using copywriting techniques and also employing a marketization of the discourse. You can see here an example on the slide. A different approach is taken in the campaign You Are Made in Row, which is based on a reward model, offering prizes to the Ukrainian refugees who register a business idea. In this particular case, the Ukrainian refugees are constructed as entrepreneurial opportunity without any reference to the challenges that are faced by, uh, by the refugees. Mm -hmm. A basic mechanism for call to action is to take advantage of the viral quality of some posts. Uh, and this virality is constructed through the use of journalistic practices, documentation, such as use of categories, aggregation of resources, or the promotion of some links. Uh, responding to the logic and specific specificity of that particular medium and also answering or creating an imperative by filling a void uh, in the information and announcing the urgency of such initiative by using emotion. Well, mm -hmm. as for the mobilization strategies in the media, what is important to say is that in the early days of the invasion, media attention was mainly focused on the borders and the resources for covering others' area were scarce. As a consequence, the field was occupied by other actors, such as brands, such as entrepreneurs, NGOs, and private citizens, and the media relied heavily on press releases. We analyzed 31st articles, as I mentioned earlier, um, and typically those articles were informative, announcing the initiative and including a quote of one of the stakeholders, either governmental or uh, coming from the NGO. NGOs are given a voice in these media articles. In fact, they speak the language of humanitarianism, which is in line with their mission statement. Uh, you can see here an example. And the informative news article briefly mentioned the cause, but they do not speak about the refugees themselves. On the other hand, the refugees emerge as one collective sufferer in the NGO statement. Mm -hmm. Another result of our analysis is that the media do not directly launch a piece to action and the refugees are never given a voice. This absence can be explained by the genre of the article and also the cumulative effect of various media. Of course, the definition of the refugee was already fixated uh, in the mind of the public through the relentless coverage on the Ukrainian border, 
um, and the coverage on social media, on TV and the official website. As a consequence, the refugees increasingly used by the media as a portmanteau word, which is filled by the public with stereotypical images of refugees also in the emotional circumstances. As a conclusion for this first part of analysis, well, the unexpected immediacy, immediacy of the refugee as a symbolic presence in Romania has triggered problematizations about attitudes towards war migrants, about fears and threats in the national imaginary, about the humanitarian ideals that mobilize people and the kind of society they project by virtue of this, of this newly acquired knowledge. The polyvocality of the owners of the problem also created a variety of genres and narratives of solidarity and the multiplicity of instruments of civic engagement. And in fact, we can see that this large scale mobilization at an individual and collective level in Romania indicates a maturation of the Romanian civil society. What is striking in our analysis is that we take these crowdsourcing platforms as dispositives, which have a strategic function. They are both infrastructure of problem solving, which use technology to mediate the relationship between donors and the crisis. And they also function as discursive fields around the public problem of refugee. Citizens are given access to the knowledge about refugee, but as consumers, not producer of this knowledge, they are highly instrumentalized as an indistinct group of donors, much like the refugees, of course, are represented as an indistinct group of distant sufferers. Their empowerment does not extend as far as participation in the deliberation. However, the refugee crisis helps the society in Romania to create new practices of humanitarian action and to project an image of the ideal Romanian society. Next, I will give the word to my colleague Molina. So the second site of our investigation was media discourse. We aim to understand the positions that the media take towards the topic of the refugee crisis. So we investigated the narratives, the themes which are given more visibility, the ideas and values mobilized by the media in facilitating the public's engagement with the problem. And also we wanted to see how the media problematized their own involvement in the debate. We privilege the media discourse on refugees as our site of investigation because of its potential to construct social reality. So in the sense that the media create arenas of public discourse and action where public problems can be defined. So the positionings towards migrants in media discourse are relevant because they highlight the moral norms which circulate in society. And uh, consequently, our corpus is based on over 150 articles which we gathered in real time. It was our, I don't know, our reaction as researchers to the outbreak of the war. We started collecting articles and we chose to exclude television debates because they would have required a different methodological approach. But on the other hand, the media articles that we analyze do include references to TV shows illustrating the hybrid character of contemporary polymedia events. And we follow the theme in three distinctive contexts to capture the debate at its highest intensity. In terms of genres, our corpus illustrates the variety of journalistic genres and formats. So we have war reportage, investigative reportage, interviews, informative articles, editorials. We have news analysis, commentary, editorial podcasts, you name it. The corpus also included media campaigns, and we distinguished between campaigns initiated by the mainstream media and by alternative media. And of course, there are differences between the two types, with the media, uh, mainstream media campaigns sharing features with campaign journalism, while uh, alternative media campaigns favored live stories. And we will insist in, on that when we discuss our findings. In terms of research questions, with our first research question, we looked at we wanted to understand how media positioned themselves towards the topic. So we looked at grand themes, narratives to see the contentious issues which have the potential to start a conversation about the refugees. So we wanted to see why the media highlights certain themes, why they silence others, what mechanisms are used to give visibility, whether there, uh, there are consensual approaches which are validated. With the second research question, it, this question is grounded in our understanding of the refugee crisis as a pivotal moment in Romanian society. And we wanted to understand what ideals, what values are mobilized, what arguments are built to invite public action, how solidarity is problematized, how inclusion and exclusion are articulated discursively. So 
to answer these questions, we carried first thematic content analysis, taking social problem construction as a rhetoric configuration closely connected to ownership we look at claims made by actors in the public arena. We also investigated media formats and genres to analyze how various journalistic practices mobilize different sets of discursive mechanisms. And finally, we employed multimodal discourse analysis to understand how the media use a variety of semiotic resources for meaning making. So for instance, we explored the affordances of text and image to perform various communicative tasks. Now, a few of the findings in terms of the evolution of the journalists' roles. You know, in the early days of the, the, the conflict, it was only the rich mainstream media outlets who could afford to send journalists to border crossing points. And th they were the ones who produced breaking news reports in the style of war journalism. And these reports circulated in different formats on various platforms and this agglomeration of media and the interactivity between outlets had several consequences in terms of style practically the journalists favored eyewitness coverage they they performed the crisis for the public and the journalists also filled the multiplicity of roles. Not only uh, did they produce stories but they also took aesthetic decisions ethical decisions after the initial crisis, the mainstream media outlets repositions themselves towards more classical roles, such as journalists as mediators, facilitators of meaning. On the other hand, the alternative media did not have the same pressure to, to cover the field. And as a consequence, their approach to the theme is different in terms of viewpoints, chosen narratives, actors. They actively search for refugees. They facilitate their relationship to the problem. And the journalists in alternative media are just one of the many owners of the problem who are given equal visibility. In terms of sources, in the early days, the media favored numbers, so a cognitive involvement with the problem. A lot of actors spoke about refugees more than the refugees themselves. What we noticed is that uh, owners are not equally visible in various genres. They don't even share the same arena. And one possible explanation could be the finite carrying capacities of public arenas. And another reason might be that generally journalists favor consensual reporting of the refugee crisis. Very few articles, in fact, gather alternative viewpoints. In terms of absences, we told you that we are also very interested in what is missing from the story. There were several themes which briefly occupied the public agenda and then retreated as undercurrents or disappeared completely. And to our surprise, one of the most significant absences was that of trauma. Uh, many of the early reports were very unethical. For instance, uh, a lot of women crying, children crying. Well, with the problematization of ethical reporting making its way into editorials, such instances virtually disappeared, replaced by an attempt to curate narratives and uh, images. Practically, the use of spectacularized incidents was replaced by a hygienization of experience. And we only found one counter example in all of our corpus. In terms of who is a refugee, the collective representation of this Ukrainian refugee at the start of the war was quickly amended to accommodate other identities. And we included here an excerpt from an editorial by a prominent journalist who wrote for Republica, an alternative media outlet, and who practically established a stance which was then largely circulated. It gave the tone for other appeals, partly because of the expressive use of identity. And here we see what we said at the beginning, that the image of Romanian diasporans is superimposed over that of refugees, which is bound to create emotions in a country which has the experience of labor migration. He says, we have seen these Ukrainians so many times, but they were Romanians. In terms of representations of belonging, what you see here is, I don't know, the typified representation of the refugee as in frozen transients, you know. Uh, reports about refugees consistently make use of narratives which convey disruption. They are on the move, in transit, inhabiting non-spaces, which is very consistent with the definition of refugees as uh, I don't know, displaced people. 
at the uh, uh, at the same time what journalists discovered especially when they traveled to uh, uh, communities of Romanians living in Ukraine for instance was that refugees were already part of a transnational social field with uh, practices with networks and institutions which were already in place yeah so practically the journalists discovered that refugees were already caught up in transnational lives in terms of narratives of solidarity, you know, in, in the first days of the war, the ones who mobilized were people, and in fact, they helped humanize the discourse around refugees. And later on, the journalists use a very flexible definition of solidarity to, to encourage people to engage with the problem. It was not just donations of money and products. It was time offered to refugees, seeking solutions, raising awareness on social media, building networks, distributing information. And many of the campaigns also functioned as crowdsourcing initiatives. Moving on, you know, I, we included here a quote uh, by an Ukrainian illustrator, because what we found is that sometimes in news reports, the refugees are missing. and practically who fills in the gaps is the public, which is a way of annulling distance towards the refugees. And in terms of the management of the refugees' visibility, um, at, at the beginning, they, these were indistinct war refugees. Yeah, but several months into the war, with some distance introduced, you know, uh, uh, between the refugee and the public, there were appeals to individualize the refugees. And we identified several mechanisms for doing that. One mechanism is to turn these refugees into characters, into their own life stories, especially those who are facilitators of their communities. They circulate from medium to medium. They are very much like characters in a reality show. You get to know your refugee by name. And a reverse mechanism to, to the normalization of refugee situation is the construction of their uh, exceptionalism. And this is where we see refugees as a category of mobilization. They are made to do something for Romania, to invite meditation upon Romanian society. Parenza? Thank you. So in conclusion, we found that the role of the Romanian journalism a journalist evolved from a traditional approach, that of producing stories, establishing frames, to a role based on aesthetic decisions, that of finding the right angles, establishing the dispositive and ethical considerations, such as approaching refugees, leaving out uncomfortable details. In the early days, the mainstream media used mainly official sources to document the theme, uh, they proposed master narratives and performed the crisis for the public. The alternative media covered the topic from a variety of angles and employed a different approach in terms of viewpoints, chosen narratives, and actors. Alternative media continued to cover the theme of refugees a lo long after the initial crisis, problematizing their integration in the host society. Overall, the refugee crisis was used by the media to project the image of an ideal Romanian society with strong humanitarian commitment. This way, the media engaged with the problem of the refugees to emphasize Romanian exceptionalism rather than normalize the discourse around refugees. To sum up, the public arenas were very densely populated by a variety of uh, narratives and problematizations about the Ukrainian refugees in the early days of the war. As time goes by, we are interested as researchers to understand which narratives will gain more visibility and how the public, the public problem of the refugee crisis will be fixed and then re-articulated in other moments of crisis by various political and media actors. Mm -hmm. Our two year interest in the problem of Ukrainian refugees has resulted in several academic contributions. As you can see from the slide, we have a forthcoming volume chapter in a volume edited by Professor Chocha that analyzes the dominant themes and narratives in the Ro Romanian media's coverage of the Ukrainian refugee crisis. 
Additionally, a forthcoming article analyzes the role of crowdsourcing platforms in creating meaning and solving problems for Ukrainian refugees. We also have a range of uh, conference presentations on topics such as discursive delegitimation uh, strategies in Romanian and Moldavian me uh, media, citizen mobilization and political participation for Ukrainian refugees in Romania, evolving discourses on Ukrainian refugees in the Romanian public sphere. We also have presented on Ukrainian refugee voices in Romania, and the use of metadialogic practices in independent media documentaries. And we also have um, an upcoming presentation on public debates, strategic narratives, and discursive practices regarding Ukrainian refugees and the Romanian media. On this slide, you can see a, a selection of our references used uh, mm -hmm. in the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and we will be more than happy to answer any question you might have on the topic of our research.